My wheel was flickering. See how when I turn it right here, that's a sweet spot. Turn it right here off, back here on, back here off, back here on. So um, um, the whole little bezel cluster. And of course it got snaps and connectors behind it. I ain't I definitely, I think I found a problem. I don't know if I found it guys, but I think I found it. Let me take what I'm putting. I can cut this ribbon back, use some of this existing ribbon and remake this same switch work. Put it back together, snapped it back in, and I got my base zero. This is what, this is basically how I coiled it up to where it's sitting in neutral before either sides roll too much. And I'm gonna have my I'm just All right, when we start off, we're going to turn the wheel 90 degrees to the side right here. You want to make sure you got access to the back of the steering wheel. See, that's the screw hole for the pedal. But when you got see the bottom there, you can't, you don't have access to the screw hole down here at the, at the bottom. So and then before we go any further, we're going to make sure we disconnect the battery. You know, just pull the covers up in the trunk. Pop that out. This whole little compartment pops up. You know, you might have a couple snaps on it. You know, like two snaps, two little, little plastic rivets or whatever. And then look down here to see that battery cable. It's one big cable, one big fat cable about the size of my index finger. Right there, that's your negative ground cable. You put, you pop that up, boom, your whole car deactivated. You see it right there? Yeah, pop that bad boy up. Boom, your whole car off, lights out. Thirteen millimeter.
see this the problem that's going on right now see my wheel was flickering see how when I turn it right here that's the sweet spot turn it right here off back here on back here off back here on now at the time I had no idea what might have been what might have been causing this but I do know that my my whole freaking steering wheel all the controls and buttons was going out you know so it looked like some kind of power issue dealing with the steering wheel because both sets of buttons on both sides of the steering wheel was affected boom 22 22 mil and as you see I'm gonna come back around it's actually a 21 millimeter that worked better came back 21 millimeter was the one I needed to go to when got to my went to my truck got my 21 mil boom fit like a right back like a jewel boy right there all up in the there we go now look I'm just gonna show you a couple little things while I got the steering wheel apart all you gotta do is like if you want to take and replace your button clusters the trim around now like those pieces just come right off they right up in there you just pull them apart it's really just like some slots they slide up in the hole like it's no buttons no clicks you just gotta give it some pressure controlled pull you don't want to just jerk it off and yank the whole thing and snap the plastic in the middle so with a nice controlled pull right here you will remove that whole little button cluster on um, the whole little bezel cluster and of course it got snaps and connectors behind it I ain't get into detail of changing that out cuz um I plan on doing that later cuz my rubber is starting to um, mess up around the whole trim but this is just a little quick little showing of how to get that off you know Now what I'm going to do right here is I'm getting this marker. See, I'm, I'm, I'm putting two little dots. I'm putting a dot on the inside piece that, that's part of the actual steering rod, the steering column itself. And I'm putting a dot right next to it on the actual steering wheel so I know exactly the position the steering wheel is in when I put it back. I don't know exactly where it's at. So I'm using, that, I'm using them dots putting them two dots right now and you're gonna be able to see exactly where the steering wheel is so I'll know exactly where it's at as far as my alignment just a quick little dot 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 quick dots real real light if you make it too big and too fat you ain't gonna be able to see you see it's, it's two little lines you'll see that's already on the actual steering wheel but don't worry about those little lines because that's not what you're trying to line it up at you're trying to line it up according to where you have it right now so see now I'm just carefully just working the steering wheel off just basically just pushing my wires through the little slot making sure I don't, I don't yank it or drop it and yanking any of the wires out now what I'm about to show you is the back of the steering wheel so you can see how the snaps work to where I was clicking to uh, unlock the airbag. It's two little holes. See on the bottom right and bottom left of the uh, steering uh, steering wheel. See on them little holes where you're putting your screwdriver at, and you literally watch. Okay, look. Okay, right here I'm showing you. Basically, that's where two little contacts hit the back of the steering wheel with some lube and grease. I didn't apply any new grease. They already had enough there that was kind of scooted to the side. So what am I doing right now? I'm smoothing it out, kind of getting it back in the tracks to make good connection. I was thinking that could have been a possible issue. I didn't know if those those uh, little uh, lines brought like dealt with the power or whatever. So I just tried that at first to see what see how that worked. And as I'm going going through the steering wheel, I'm just kind of trying to look inside right now see what kind of problems it might have anything that might look like an issue I'm just trying to fix it I see right here I'm doing the same thing I did with the side buttons I just literally pulled the bottom piece out and you can see 
how you can change that plastic out see I got that old sticky rubber right there one way to get that uh, kind of mitigate that sticky rubber real quick is just kind of getting some denatured alcohol on the, on the cotton rag and just wiping it down all that junk go away right away so that's a temporary fix but it don't eliminate all the issues that come with the getting back sticky again so that's just keep that in mind until you actually change your plastic pieces up now I'm going ahead and I'm, I'm taking two screws out the bottom of the steering column this is going to release the plastic and that way it takes that shroud around the steering column away so you can look inside of it at the components inside okay so I'm, I'm actually doing it wrong this is the day before so I'm taking it apart right but I also take apart that whole little bottom kick right. panel so we remove the top cover of the column because once you remove those screws off the bottom the top cover there's three screws actually so I'm actually skipping the part yes, this direction I'm gonna three show you I'm gonna explain and if you can I'm gonna explain right here, how the cover comes the off after you have to come from the bottom side one of them is kind of right behind this module and you got to come right behind it to get to it and the other one's kind of further back and then one's over here but this is the pattern so you can see about where those screws are take that off you have full access to the steering column on modules okay so I, <clears throat> I made a mistake I actually I guess I deleted this video or I didn't record when I was doing it okay so the screws to get to the panel to get to the steering wheel column so right here under the speedometer and the rpm gauge there's two screws one on each side one under each gauge on the left side and the right side this is the first piece of plastic you take out it's right there above the steering wheel you literally just reach in there and you pull it away from the steering wheel and it pops out that exposes the top two screws you got two screws on the very bottom like literally you have to almost crawling your back under the dashboard on the driver's side with your feet at down there one on the very left side on the edge of the car and one on the very right side almost right right next to the courtesy light that's down at the corner that's next to the, um, the center column all right then you got another screw that's on the, on the on the left side panel so basically when you open the door on the left side of the, um, that whole console that little side panel comes off you got to pop that off inside of there there's a screw right on the side you'll be able to look right up in there and see a screw kind of on the front part toward this like facing the driver where the driver is but uh, not facing the driver on the side but toward the driver part you pull that screw out all of that should release the panel I think it's five total screws if I'm not mistaken uh, five total screws uh, should be and all that should release the panel and that whole panel should be pretty much just be able to fall out at that point and i saw it i saw the video got deleted y'all but i thought i had it in here explaining how to take that off but it must have got moved you know you got your turn signal lights and everything over here on the left side and the way you remove this if you need to take anything off you just push these snaps down top and bottom and literally it just it already kind of started sliding out but it just comes out boom that's that module and then this is your, your other module snap on the top snap on the bottom just pinch and they slide out of course you probably want to unplug these before just to make sure you don't yank any wires you don't have to pull very hard either but now, now that's pretty much free now I'm down to this my issue is literally behind this I'm trying to see if this is something to separate because this is uh from the manual I see this is like two or three different devices all in one you know there's an angle sensor in here there's the rotary uh, position thing something but which is basically with this right here and that's what I'm trying to see if I can isolate or look in there if it's something simple so I'm probably gonna end up unbolting this I know one thing they they have a tool also because they, they, they don't want you to move this too much so right now based on in the, th the 360 revolutions you know if I turn it one time I'm already off track a whole turn so I just got to keep it pretty much within one turn of each other doing this and this hasn't really affected me in the last couple times I took it off so try to keep it 
within a one turn within 360 degrees of where it needs to be but i have no idea what's going to happen when i take this off so i'm going to try to look behind here and see if i can see if any wires missing or anything but the furthest i may go is taking this off if i see a way to get inside of it i'm gonna try but we're gonna see from here also to take off this module right here this is it's pretty simple there's a snap Try to look at this very close because if you look at this from the front there's a snap right there push that snap against this it's back here on the side push it against this and that should release this and you should be able to slide this out just like so and that's that module and I already unplugged that one down here what it looks like under there this is some kind of a rotary sensor thing I'm not sure I doubt if my issue is coming from here because there's no feedback that goes to my actual steering wheel through this so I know this can't be my issue because my steering wheel was going on and off I'm gonna leave this completely alone so my steering wheel feedback controls go through this module and come out on this through these sensors and stuff so my issue has to be between here and where these wires come out so my issue is going to exist in this part this actual part right here so worst case scenario if i don't know what the hell is going on i buy a new one of these i'm almost positive that my problem would be solved with this seat belt issue uh, I mean, on uh, airbag, not seat belt, airbag light, uh, intermittent steering wheel going on and off, whatever. So, I got the part, part number right here. See what it's, see all the issues that come from this. All of my steering wheel controls go through this piece right here. And I, I, I can clearly see just moving that steering wheel back and forth that the power is going on and off. I doubt no movement no there are no moving parts on this horn that's going back out so i don't expect anything to be wrong with this horn that's going back out because these and these these wires don't move with the steering wheel uh and there's no issue there's nothing moving back here no moving parts so the only movement takes place in this rotary deal right here so if i can't see anything happening right here i'm really just gonna buy a new one but looks like I could take these snaps and pop this thing out. So I think I'm gonna go one layer deeper with this thing right here. Okay, so I got the lemon pepper stepper on. My air pump kicked on. But these are lemon pepper steppers. And um got an air pump, got it damn. So, along with the lemon pepper steppers, we got this module out. Now, this is the back side of the module. This is the part that goes, you're looking at it from the steering, from the actual engine side of my car. That's the front, that's the back. And you see clearly four snaps in the back of here that could pop out and this whole front piece should pop off. 
I bet you my issue in there. Remember, your issue typically revolves around where your moving parts are. And this right here, this is where my moving parts are. So I'm gonna pull this thing out right here. If I break this thing, I'm just gonna buy a new one. Whatever, I think it's like 200, I don't know. I didn't look the price up, but this gonna be cheaper than me going to the dealer and getting them to do the work. Doing the work is easy. So I'm gonna try to, okay, that's not gonna be hard. Start from one side, hold it out. Second one, third, boom, four. All right. Ooh, I can see an issue right now. Not issue, but I can see a problem right now. So when I pop this out, this thing is curled all the way up and there's a ribbon wrapped all the way around in here. You can see, there's a ribbon in there. And this thing is, might just uncurl. Okay. So this is the uh, ribbon cable in here. And this is literally how it moves. So this 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 is kind of cool. You can see what's going on inside. Alright. This thing is wrapped up in here. I could definitely see a problem going on. I definitely I think I found a problem. I don't know if I found it, guys, but I think I found it. Let me tell you what I'm, what I'm looking at. Look right here. Look inside this cable. Look at that. Broken connections. Broken. Look right there. Oh, yeah. That's brittle, right? That's broken connection. See how the tape's all ruffled? That's my issue. That is it. I'm going to tell you right now, if I don't know 100% what a problem is, I could definitely tell you that is about to be an issue if it's not the issue. This is where my problems are happening. And then when you look it down in here, look, let me see. Look like some shorting has been going on in there. I'm kind of close to the camera, but like some shorting has been going on inside of there. And you can see my connection is brittle right there. I can feel it, it feels rough on this side. Yup. That's it. So, let me see. There's so much paper wrapped in here. I almost like I can just rewrap this thing. Just re. I don't know if I can make the connections up myself, but I could almost cut this off and pick up from here and unwrap an extra wrap. They got look how much paper in there. This my steering wheel don't spin that many turns. So, two. You see the issue now. All right, so if I could take this off, because these wires, this connector is, is all one piece. This is one mold, molded piece. But inside this this little piece right here, that where, where the wires come, you can actually see there's a separation in there. So these are two different pieces. So inside here is like a little connector, and there's a connect. It's not really a connector. It's one whole piece that's soldered or molded to this piece right here. So this all ideally is supposed to just be able to slide out. I'm having trouble trying to get this whole thing out. If I can get this out, I can cut this ribbon back, use some of this existing ribbon, and remake this same switch work. Worst case scenario, I just have to buy a new one. But I really, really see, and I'm, look, I'm just looking since I took it out. I done bent this thing a couple more times. I'm looking, look at all of them just snapping. This crinkle, when this happened, look, you can actually see right there, it's completely separated right there. That's, that's my power probably, because it's one of the bigger connectors on the end. Make sure I'm in the camera. See, it's one of the bigger connect, big bigger uh, prongs on the end. So my, it's probably my power right here. And these are probably a lot of my controls, just smaller. And they're all crinkled and broken. So this is definitely my issue. I'm like about 90% sure. Uh, but if I can get this piece out right here, I don't know how this works inside of here. If they're just a bunch of snap-ins that, that stick into the coil or stick into the ribbon or what. But I might be able to cut this back and make this work. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to cut this off. Cut 
I'm gonna cut this off right now. Cause there's there's no need for that. Cause the worst case scenario, I have to buy a new one anyway. But you can see, man, look, this chunk was done. And there ain't no coming back from that. But if I can get this piece out right here, get these connectors like pushed in and it pops this whole thing out. I can take this apart. You can see it's, it's a separate piece, like it slides out and it slides right in that groove. I probably can get in here and see how to put a new piece of ribbon inside of here. And I can see a little bit right now. I just don't know what about inside of there. Okay, after I got tired of trying, I just had to put some force behind it. I literally put the screwdriver on this little apex right here and just put some ass into it and boom, it popped out. So just all that I really needed. I was trying to be real delicate, you know, but then sometimes, you know, you, you know, you might, you, you commit to it at some point and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy a new one anyway. Let me go ahead and just do what I really want to do. And I put a little more pressure on it and boom, it's, it popped out. I thought it could have been glued in there or something. So now I'm gonna take some of this tape off so these wires can slide up in here a little easier. Take some of this tape back. Only to get a little bit of it out. Okay. These wires slide through. Take this out. Look at that. And this is where my ribbon goes. My ribbon is up in here. And does this come apart? I don't think it does. I think this may be hard molded. And I can see it. They actually did a plastic weld right there. So this is not really made to come apart. This is really where the journey typically ends. But I'm going to go a step further. Try to get up under here. Once they sorted these joints at. And see what kind of soldering job this cable has down here. And boom, there we go. Boom, the ribbon is exposed. The connectors right there, exposed. Just like that. So, uh, actually, with care and delicate work, I can make this work if I want to take my time and go that far. I mean, that's literally in, just literally just Probably would go and let me see. They're pressed in at the corner. They're separated. I would really break them right there. So I needed a hard surface. So I got this leftover marble. I mean granite. Uh, and I got this razor out. I'm actually use the sharper side of the razor this time. And um, what's working pretty damn good for me is. Laying this thing down, put it on the edge, and scraping. Little by little, don't don't want to stand the razor up, you dig too much. And literally just laying it down. And it's gonna take the plastic off. As long as you don't be too rigorous with it, it'll take, it'll take the plastic off. Just take the metal off right here. So I actually messed up on the end a little bit. Check that out. Go scrape some more on this side, but that's exposing the conductors in there. If I do that enough, I come back with my switch, overlay it, make sure I got the direction, the polarity right. This is the back, the bottom. That's the bottom. So swap both of them over. I would have to overlay it like this. Come back in and do some precision soldering. Close this up. Put this back together, roll it back in. Roll it back in and then I can put this back together. I can really make that work. 
That is not far fetched. So I actually did pretty good with the razor. I got it stripped all the way back. And I even got the paper from between. And the way I did the paper from between was pretty easy. I just basically stuck my razor, pinned it down between it, and pulled this away. And I can still do it again right now. But make sure you don't have it on the um, copper because you could break the copper. But just sit there and pull it away. You'll notch it away little by little and you'll get it all from between. So I'm probably going to even these out a little closer to get these tad bit even. I don't gotta go, I'm not gonna go super close. But about right here, sc scotch bite this down, just sc scruff it up a little bit more. Probably use it with the razor, I mean with the, with the razor blade. And then I'm gonna see if I can get this sorted. I'm gonna see if this will work. Still a long shot, but it's more possible now. Hey, it was not the easiest, but don't tell me why I think I got this mug sorted up. I think I got it slapped on there pretty good. Man, I'm trying to check my errors right now. I melted a lot of the plastic from the back side when I was trying to oh, clear this out. But I think I got it clear with no shorts. Um, I'm gonna get my meter and test. Point to point. Continuity check. And I'm gonna go right here where I can see my clean brake set and touch from pin to pin. Let's see if I can get y'all in a better spot. One more, four percent, man. The battery about to die. Well, let's look, point to point. So it's touching. Let me see. So let me see if that's touching. That's clear. That's clear. That's clear. Okay. That's clear. That's clear. That's clear. Only time you're hearing the clicking is when I'm I'm going on the same probe by accident. Okay. Okay. So my my very first one. So these two are shorted and these two are shorted. If I can free them up, we clear. This thing would be all together if I can free these up. All right, so upon looking at the ribbon again, the two that I think I thought was shorted on the ends, I think they're supposed to be like that because they're not touching. Because when you look at the end of the cable, let me grab this. When you look at the ends, you see how it's doubles on both ends? Both sides have doubles. I think that's doubled up for positive and doubled up for negative. So they actually are the same piece. So it's supposed to be like that. That's why both ends are shorting. Like this might be your, your, your negative and these two may be your positive. So I think they're supposed to be like that. Well, I managed to get them all sorted back together. My battery was dying, so I got it over here charging. So I'm about to reassemble the whole thing. Put this back together. I'm gonna have to fold the ribbon. I'm gonna have to, have to make sure I could put a nice fold on a ribbon and have a slight bend in it like this. If I crease it like this, it's gonna have it's gonna break again. So I gotta make sure I get a nice fold on the ribbon in there like this, without a solid press, and put this back together. And I think this piece gonna work, man. I think that was I think that piece is like two hundred and something bucks. I, I didn't look at it. I was looking at some pieces last night, and it included that entire module. I think the it was like two fifty or two eighty, and I I didn't know all them pieces separated. But I think that module right there is like two eighty. I think I might have saved that money today. We're about to find out though. Put it back together, snapped it back in, and I got my base zero. This is what this is basically how I coiled it up to where it's sitting in neutral before either sides roll too much. And I'm gonna have my this is gonna be my center point. This is and I see why they don't want you to roll this too much. And you want to keep it stationary because you could twist that ribbon too much. So when I called it and rolled it up, this is exactly what the bottom was. This is going to be my center on my car for turning. So I guess what, two turns to the right and two turns, or a turn and a half. I don't know how many turns my steering will turn, but it'll be able to get a full revolution and a full revolution. Back, back, that's zero. Full revolution, 
full revolution back oop oop we just had a we just had something take place and i felt that i'm gonna take this apart one more time just to make sure okay so i didn't clear the codes well plug the battery on cable back up uh put the fault reader on there cleared the east clear the codes or whatever and um ecu or whatever um start the car up didn't see any issue let it run for a while cut it back off and i'm gonna start it up again for y'all seatbelt light gone check engine light gone all of that was in this harness and the seatbelt light had been intermittent i had already put it on my maintenance list to go get it checked out at the um at the dealer but all of that was coming from that hornet slowly breaking. The seatbelt light was just the first one of all the issues that was happening. And slowly, it was the uh, the hang up call and then the volume on the, the change buttons was started going out next. And so slowly and surely, I mean, almost everything was going out. And when that power broke, the whole steering wheel went black. And it looks like everything is fine. If any wires were shorted, we'll get an immediate code because it'll be shortened right now. It'll come back on. So my, those those two wires on both ends of that ribbon, they were they were supposed to be shorted together. Technically not shorted. They're actually the same circuit. They had two powers, two positives, two negatives. You somebody could probably confirm that by looking at the manual and seeing the wire pin out or whatever. But it's right now, no issues. Uh, and I think we are good to go, man. So. Um, appreciate y'all for watching the video man but now y'all know man that's the full steering wheel disassembly uh that's also the under the assembly panel that goes under it uh disassembly airbag removal uh button change out trim change out i gotta change this out i'm, I'm gonna probably clean this off with alcohol list but uh i mean paddle removal that covered the modules as far as your your, your, your flashers windshield wiper um, yeah, 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 uh, tilt sensor, um, um, even, they even have some sensors I can't even name, you know, your, your uh, that rotary sensor thing, um, everything, man, so y'all seen, that was pretty detailed on how to take apart and disassemble the whole video, um, the whole, uh, circuit, man, so, if y'all like this video, man, just make sure y'all subscribe to the channel for more content, you know, more repairs as I come and keep this vehicle for a while, and, um, I mean, make sure y'all give it a thumbs up and also share it, man. I'm going to post this on the, on the Jaguar forum so guys can see. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I did my best with it. And I think the pad repair came out pretty damn good at the expense of a few hours of work, man. So, again, make sure y'all stay tuned in. You know what it is. Deuces. Click that button. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Just click it. Click it right now. Yeah.